Well, welcome back. Uh, this is lecture two, and today we're going to talk about biomes. So the goals for lecture today are twofold. First, we are going to go over climate diagrams, and afterwards you should be able to look at a climate diagram and figure out what factors actually limit plant growth at a given site, and you should be able to predict what the major features of the vegetation at a given site will be given the climate. The second uh, goal for the lecture today is for you to be able to look at a climate diagram, know something about the climate, and from that climate predict things about the location of that, that site. Uh, and that's going to relate a lot to what we talked about last time when we talked about the factors that control climate. Okay, so last time we talked about the causes of spatial and seasonal differences in climate across the planet. And it turns out that those predictable and different uh, patterns in climate lead to different and predictable patterns in the vegetation that live there. And this coupling of the climate and the vegetation is known as the biome concept. So the biome is just the name we give for a biological grouping uh, based on plant form and function that is predictably related to climate. And what does that mean? Well, it means that if we know something about the climate in a location, then we know something about the vegetation that lives there and the characteristics of that vegetation. Now, what sort of characteristics do vegetation and plants have? Well, one major characteristic is their growth form. So a tr um, some different growth forms of plants include things like whether it's a tree, uh, which is a woody plant with one major uh, stem axis that just grows upward, usually is quite tall, um, or it might be a shrub, which is also a woody plant, but has usually is usually multi-stemmed and usually much uh, shorter than a tree. Uh, plants may also be herbaceous, which is non-woody, and so they might be something like a grass. Uh, some plants are succulent, it's a plant form, and that just means their tissues are store a lot of water, so something like a cactus. So these are different growth forms of, of the vegetation. Another characteristic uh, that is related to climate is a plant's leaf morphology or leaf habit. And an, an example of this is whether the leaves are deciduous or evergreen. So does the plant keep its leaves all year round or does it, it drop them uh, for part of the year? And we have examples of both leaf habits in Arkansas so here on the bottom of your screen to the left, you can see this oak leaf. The oak trees, at least in Arkansas, uh, are deciduous. So they drop their leaves in the winter. Whereas this pine here is evergreen and holds its leaves or needles all year round. Now, leaf morphology can also differ with climate as well. And these are a nice example of the difference between a broadleaf, again this oak, and a needle-leafed uh, plant, this pine. Then there are also differences in terms of whether the plant is annual or perennial, so does it live its life all in one growing season or a single year, or does it live for many, many years? And then there are also physiological traits that tend to be predictable based on climate, for example, is the, are the plants frost tolerant or are they frost sensitive? So, we are now going to go through and talk about the major biomes um, on the planet. Uh, at least one way of categorizing the different biomes. Um, it's going to differ slightly from the way the biomes are set out in your textbook, although mostly it's in agreement. Um, but as we talk through and go through these biomes, we're going to describe 
um, the climate using what is known as a Walter climate diagram. And there's an example of one here on the right of your screen. Now, these climate diagrams are useful for describing climate because they make it very clear, first of all, when plant growth can occur during a normal year. And they also are good at letting us figure out if plant growth is generally water limited or temperature limited. And you can see that this diagram has both temperature here on the left side, the axis on the left, and it has precipitation with the months along the bottom. Now, to interpret this and figure out if water or temperature is limiting, there are two basic rules that you have to remember. The first rule is that plants need about zero de degrees or more, so generally warmer than freezing, for any plant growth to occur. Um, and so in this case, we can see, okay, there are actually several months where the average temperature falls below zero degrees Celsius. So water is frozen. So there's no plant growth that's going to be occurring at that time of year. And actually, if you look here along the bottom, you can see the months that are warm enough for plant growth to occur um, are actually highlighted. So right away, we know that this system is at least partially temperature limited um, because it's truncating the growing season to only a part of the year because it's too cold um, in these winter months. Now, the second rule for interpreting these Walter climate diagrams is that for every 10 degrees of temperature that you have, it, you meaning a plant, <laughs> The, you need 20 millimeters of precipitation to support, um, to support growth. Now, why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. When it's hotter, there's more evaporation. And so that means that when it's warmer, you need more water in the form of precipitation to counter the loss of water through evaporation. And that's evaporation that may happen from the soil. So the water evaporates before plants can take it up, but mostly it's just water evaporating from plant surfaces like leaves, so it's actually transpiration. So the warmer it is, the more precipitation plants need in order not to be water limited. And so how do we tell from these diagrams if there's enough water or not? Well, luckily, the axes here are lined up in such a way that for every 10 degrees in temperature, it lines up perfectly with 20 millimeters of precipitation. So if we look at our precipitation line here, we can see that it is above the point uh, where temperature would equal precipitation in the sense that if the precipitation line was directly meeting at the place where temperature was, well there, there would be just enough water to meet the demand of the plant. And so it would basically be on the point of being limited by wa water and not limited by water. If this precipitation line falls below the temperature line, that indicates there's not enough precipitation to support plant growth given the temperature. Um, and so in this particular biome, then what we can see is that this line is always above the temperature line. So that indicates that water is not limiting for the entire year round. So this site is temperature limited, but it's not water limited.